the Kansas City Chiefs broke their 50-year drought of Super Bowl appearances by earning their way to Super Bowl 54. We're going to talk about some of the unsung heroes right now. Morning, Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, and for those of you that aren't, good morning to you as well. Um, it's a rare thing for me to record in the morning, but there's so much to look at. Uh, and the release of the All-22 has been a little bit uh, delayed. So we're going to get into this this morning, uh, and hopefully I'll get this back on track for you. There's a lot to unpack here. There's been so many contributions made along the way to get to this Super Bowl. We're going to focus on the Super Bowl uh, coming up here next week, but we want to look at some film today, and I really wanted to take a look at a couple of guys, and you guys have been asking for that. A lot of the subs on this channel wanted to see Dan Sorensen film reviewed. I'm going to do that for you. If you are not a sub on this channel already, make sure you click that right now. Hit the sub button, the notification bell, and drop it all the way down so you get all the notifications. Leave your comment below, and if you like this video, give me that thumbs up. We're going to talk about the guy who came here to make the change and the guy who's making the change as a result. It is very much linked, I think. And Tyron Matthew and Dan Sorensen have really picked up the pace since the loss of Juan Thornhill at the back, you know, the free safety spot, which is really what Juan Thornhill did the best and honestly what they need him the most for. Uh, since then, it's been about aggression. It's been about playing solid football, playing aggressive football from these two guys that are much closer up into the box the majority of the time. And I, I do believe that the what was a good player before in Dan Sorensen is really absorbing a lot from working with and playing with Tyron Matthew. Now, we are to the point now where it's all hands on deck. It's get everything that you can get and get gone so that they can play this game against what is a tough opponent, one that ran the ball really well in the championship game on the NFC side, and what is a coach over in San Francisco that is a very creative play caller in Kyle Shanahan, a guy that reminds me of Andy Reid in that, you know, the offensive genius, quote-unquote, but he does things creatively, and he's not afraid to go to the run when he needs to go to the run. He does have a quarterback that, unlike Reid, he has to kind of protect and I think that's going to be important as we get into what we're going to look at next week running up to that Super Bowl. There's going to be plenty of content around here. And I just wanted to point a couple of things out that Sorensen has made his progression. The biggest leap for me is that Tyron Matthew has gone from a guy that wanted to be a leader, that the team wanted to be a leader, to learning the Spags defense, to leading it, to leading this entire team. He is up there with Patrick Mahomes as the leader of this entire roster. That's key to have. It's more than one voice, especially when you have uh, something on the defensive side really helps. Uh, there's a lot of character coming out on this side of the ball as well, and I think that all feeds in together, but you need somebody to lead it, and Tyron Matthew has become that guy. We're going to look at some of his plays despite his size. Uh, his aggressive physical plays really stood out to me. And then Dan Sorensen has really not only progress what he's doing in terms of being where he's supposed to be, being instinctual, he's always had a, a tinge for the big play, but Spagnuolo's using him the best way that he can in keeping him up at the line of scrimmage for the most part. Not always, but for the most part. That's where he seems to make his biggest plays. It's a mindset thing. We talked on the sideline about one, taking one play at a time and stacking up positive plays. And we were able to do that. We had a couple plays that, that uh, turned in our favor, gave the offense the ball back. They were capitalized. They scored. And then from there, we just kept carrying the momentum. And we worked together as a team. We played together as a team. And, and we saw a great team victory out there. One of the couple of plays that we're talking about, the fake punt. Can you just walk me through what you saw? It's ended up being one of the biggest plays of the game. That, that's my responsibility. So I did my job, pretty much, just like anybody else would have done their job. What was it like to see the offense take the advantages and the opportunities that you gave them? Go down, I think it was seven touchdowns and seven straight drives. It was awesome. You know, um, and, and we know what they're capable of it. And so seeing them do that, um, picking up where, where we were leaving off, playing together as a team, it, it was great. And we build on it. We, we look back 
And, and uh, it gives us confidence. No matter how, how many points, how far we're down, we're going to fight. And we're going to fight all the way to the end. And we're going to carry that, uh, you know, through this whole playoff period. That, that, that's what it's all about. It's about playing together as a team and fighting together as a team. We did that tonight. And I, I think he's really responding to playing with Matthew and getting some of those keys, those visual keys, those instinctual keys that have really taken him down the road. So we're going to look at the film here. We're going to come back tomorrow and look at the offensive side. And we're going to hit the ground running next week as we start to look at the San Francisco 49ers. Check out the film. We're going to start this film session as the Chiefs are preparing for Super Bowl 54. This is the AFC Championship game. We're going to bop around a little bit in here. And I really want to stress that this is a combination of players making up for the fact that Juan Thornhill got hurt. This defense has really done very, very well to move responsibilities around to use what they have, but get guys playing at a higher level to try and make up for the difference of having that elite rookie back there. Uh, and I don't mean elite across the league. I mean elite among rookies. Juan Thornhill is playing very, very well as a free safety, and they will miss him eventually, but they're making up for it with some play from some other people. Now, this is a play that I want to start with because this is a very similar play to what I showed you in the lead up to this game. This is something that Tyron Matthew does better than Earl Thomas did when I showed it to you on the game film for the game plan against these Titans. And that is that he is going to make a big play in a spot that you really don't know that he can. He is going to be blitzing here, something that he's very, very good at. And you see him lined up here in the gold gloves. This is Fuller back behind him with Dan Sorensen lined up deep, hitches in here. They're a little bit concerned about what's going on with Derrick Henry, as they should be. This has been a point in the game where they've been running pretty well. This is still in the first half, and this is a play that I think really demonstrates exactly what you have in, in Matthew, not in coverage. I think this is great and something that they're going to continue to utilize. And as we roll forward, you're going to see the instinct here. As Hitch walks up to the line, you see Tandle have to change off that call. So we're just digging in a little deep there. Technically, I would have liked to have seen them be a little bit wider with both Wilson up above to be able to take on a block, straight ahead block here, as well as, as four over here, just in case you get that outbreaking route. But that said, the alignment looks good. And so far, you don't see anything from Tyron Matthew. As we roll forward, he's made that adjustment. Now he's coming. He ducks underneath that and, and actually goes and makes the play on Derrick Henry. So much for being a Titan that nobody can bring down, right? This is an instinctual play. This is timing from the safety spot. And this is exactly what Earl Thomas had done to them before and had a, a good pass rush but didn't get home. This is Tyron Matthew making a big splash on a run away from him. As he comes down, makes contact, and he did go up high, which I said he shouldn't do, but it did slow Henry down enough to help his teammates, and that's really what it comes back to. We take another look at it, and right here off the gun, they make the adjustment, and Matthew's got it timed up. As soon as he gets ready to hike the ball, bam, he's off. And you can see that he's already, because of his positioning, beaten the block of what that particular wide receiver was trying to do. Not doing it very well, and as we get it right back to that spot right there, he's already shot out of a gun. Now, this is a counter. So it does help him in coming downhill that far because Henry is faking this way and going to come dive back out here. But Matthew has to cover this seven, eight yards in the meantime. And he is just off and going. Helps him get to the linebackers, and that's how you make a play. Now, in this particular play, this is when you get the Titans or any team. You're going to see this with the 49ers, although I don't know that they are going to want to run as many wideouts onto this field. But if you get to the point where the run isn't getting it done for you and you're in a position where you're behind and you're trailing and you need to throw to get first downs, and that's exactly what the Chiefs game plan is going to be, is to get these 49ers in a similar position where they have to throw to win. This is what you're going to get. And you have a little bit of an interesting uh, formula here because I really like what they've done. They've shifted Tano Passino into the A-gap over on the strong side of the formation that has the trips. And they put Chris Jones out at the end, but they still have Frank Clark even wider out there. And they're all on one side of the ball in the meat of the formation where you have to think that they're going to try to run maybe a bubble, maybe some kind of quick out or kind of thing that you can get your hands up and get maybe a block, maybe a PBU out of it. But on the other side, you have Suggs by his lonesome going against Luan. And this is a nice setup because 
while there'll be help from the guard, he it gives him this wide nine technique that he can get upfield. And that allows what D- Neiman is doing here and showing something with uh, two safeties back, Sorensen Fuller. And, and this allows Tyron Matthew to just creep. This is where he's best. This is a classic robber roll. This is like a single nickel, basically, with more DBs than there are linemen or front seven guys on the field. And you're going to see just how much room that Tyron Matthew has to travel in order to make what is a big play, a big hit that sets the tone. And tone is what this is about. They're being aggressive with the front, and they're going to be aggressive with what they do in coverage. Now, he's creeping up to try to give him that fake. Both he and even drop out, and the pass rush is, is doing okay, but they're not getting home. And at this point, Dan Hill's still got some room to maneuver. He's getting ready to deliver that ball. And what we've seen is from here, there's been a backtracking of what Tyron Matthew has had to do. You see from where he was pre-snap there at the 29, and he rolls forward. He's dropping pretty well, looking at that seam and trying to figure out where they're going to do, but there's two guys there. And so he's back now at the 45. He's covered 16 yards in his back pedal. He's got the middle of the field broken down, and he's got the player in front of him as Tannehill's about to deliver the ball. And this is where Matthew gets on his horse and comes downhill. This is the result of playing instinctually. The ball hits, he hits. This is a big play in setting the tone that even if you're going to get a pass completed, you're going to pay for it. And this next play is very similar as well. More of a standard configuration up front because you do have an inline tight end and another player over here. But this is Matthew lined up in the slot. He's got two safeties behind him. Fuller up top, Sorensen over here. And this does allow him to play the odds a little bit more, to be, play with his technique. He's not really showing a whole lot right here, except he does have a little creep towards the inside, but he is dropping into his zone. And he's made that zone, and he understands what he's got behind him in that the safety's got the deep, the outer corner has this route, and so his guy is really in front of him. And literally, as soon as he clears this confrontation, Matthew's coming downhill, and this is going to be Davis that he's going to come make another big play on and set that tone. This is huge, especially for a player that is on the small side, even for his own position. And to watch it in real time, which is what I'm going to show you now, just watch the recognition factor and coming downhill. Bam, foot in the dirt, and here he comes. This is what being a leader is about, and he's rubbing off on other players. And that brings me to this play. This is how he has changed the attack for some other players. It's not just about being smart, which Tyron Matthew definitely is. Recognition and instinct skills are his forte. It's rubbing off on guys like Dan Sorensen, too. And I know you guys have been asking about Sorensen films, so here we go. This is going to be a play by Dan here playing in the nickel that he is really not meant to make. You're going to see the instant recognition as soon as they snap this ball. Dan's got that middle zone. There's no wide receiver out here, so he knows he's got Chaveris to the outside. He's got Suggs and Tano in front of him as well. And it's very clear to him, as soon as this fake happens, what his responsibility is. Now look at this. This is a pocket that has developed. Sorensen is coming downhill right now. Chaveris Ward has the outside release. And Tannehill's here in the back. Right now, it looks like this is a double team on Suggs. But Dan Sorensen knows better. And watch how it appears. He steps outside that block. Dan ducks under and makes that play. And that's something that not every player can do. It's a really instinctual play. Something that we've seen him do things maybe a half step, maybe a whole step slower than that in the past. He does make plays. But this is what he's very good at. This is his best area of the field. And this is Matthew allowing him to play his technique and play his instincts because of the example Matthew provides. Now, this is the play that you've all been waiting for. This is the uh, confrontation, we'll call it, with Tannehill and Sorensen. Sorensen's lighting up here, again, just looking to play his part, to do his job, and this is what comes of it. As he's dropping out, man in his zone, got his guy. This guy's going to go off, and he's going to come off of this route when he sees Tannehill break right here. And he's just putting his shoulder in, form tackle, doesn't take him to the ground, doesn't do anything outlandish, just does his job. And I think that's really the best explanation of what you get from Dan Sorensen. He's going to go out of the frame here in a second, but he will come back in. I think you're going to like that. As he cuts, just puts his shoulder down, no helmet, just doing his job. That's what you get from Sorensen, and I think it's great to see both him and Matthew coming together and Matthew's influence on him. So... Kudos to Dan, and I know you've been waiting for that, but if you guys like this, 
and other videos like it, make sure that you get subbed right now. Hit the notification bell and the drop down so you get them all. Make sure you leave your comment what you think of this particular one and leave me a thumbs up if you like it. I appreciate you guys watching them all. We're getting ready for the Super Bowl. Check out these other videos as they come up and I'll check you next time.